Friends, welcome back. Today, we build the 2S19 howitzer. You've seen the review, now let's build this up. We'll start off with the basics. We just need basic tools, our sprue cutters, a knife, liquid cement, and some files. The first thing I did was check the drive sprockets to see how they fitted with the tracks. First, I supplied kit parts for the tracks. And secondly, these aftermarket tracks from Master Club. The fit is superb, so we will use them. Let's remove the parts from the sprues. And sorry guys, if this is the, really the basics, you can skip forward to the next parts. Once the parts are removed, let's clean them up carefully. I use a somewhat coarse file on these road wheels. Sometimes it's good to leave some texture on them. It picks a bit of wear. Sometimes check with your fingernail, just to see that you've totally removed that sprue burr. Liquid cement is used throughout this build. In this case we're using the ammo of MIG product. Of course the products by Tamaya, Mr. Hobby, and others it's perfectly acceptable. Try and apply the minimum cement to the parts then carefully place them together. Ensure you have a strong bond. This is a lower hole. It's pretty well detailed. Also dry fit your parts. This is just checking it without cement to see that the fit is correct and true. Then where possible, apply the liquid cement inside the tank. This alleviates any cleanup or glue stains on the outside of the vehicle where it could be visible. Check the alignment of frequent issues. Uh, frequent intervals and check that all the suspension mounts are true. Let's dry fit the road wheels. These road wheels will not be glued into position. We can move them later to make painting somewhat easier.
This model has a working front blade, but we fix that in the position with liquid cement later on. With some care, and by carefully following the instructions, you will have a workable driver's hatch. It's time to mount the lower to the upper hull. This somewhat clicks into place, the fit is pretty good at the back but leave something desired at the front. This is quite easy to solve. All we need to do is make sure that we glue the back deck first, let it set, then press the front deck into position and apply the liquid cement. The results are okay and the bond will be firm. This is the barrel cradle. If it's built up carefully, the parts will be movable. There are two PE frets included within the model kit. You have to remove the protective packaging, which is a film of plastic on the outside of the parts. We took our time to carefully build up the barrel cradle to ensure that it could actually be moved into position. This will help make sure that when we do fit the turret that the barrel fits firmly as it should do. It's time to build up the Master Club metal track links. The tracks themselves are white metal. They have excellent detail, including hollowed out guide horns. Assembly is fairly straightforward. first thing that we do is use a container for the resin track pins. They are very small, very delicate and could be lost. Putting them in this container makes it easy to handle the, the resin pins and also make sure that we don't lose them. To assemble the tracks, we just simply place the two tracks interlinking them together. The white metal is flexible enough and I found out throughout the construction of the tracks that there was not much flash. They did not require any sanding. To place the pins, I found the best method was simply to use my fingers. I slotted the pin into the small hole within the track link and only used finger pressure to make the pin sit firmly home. You have to build one side at a time. The process is repeated on the other side, again just using light finger pressure. You may find it necessary to adjust the track links a little bit. Even wiggling them slightly will help ease the pins into position. I found it was best to work in pairs of track links at a time. 
This way, if resin trap pins do break, you only need to deal with two sections of track instead of a large join of track, which could be somewhat problematic. I built up the tracks over a series of maybe four or five days. This somewhat eased the monotony of this task. Once again, just very carefully insult the track pins. Here's a close up to show you better. I just made sure that I used the soft part of my fingertips to insert, insert the uh, track pin. This way I avoided breaking them. They are very delicate. It doesn't take too long to form up these track lengths and they are fully workable. Once they're assembled, we check the fit to the tank. The fit is excellent. Here you can see the firm join to the drive sprocket. It's time to build up the fender details. The fenders contain numerous components, which are mainly these zip boxes or storage boxes. I pre-assembled all the storage boxes first and then checked their fit. I always try to apply the minimum cement during the construction process. These individual boxes took quite some time to construct, but the detail that is rendered is pretty good creates for a realistic model. We just need to repeat the process on the other side, on the other fender. Finally, after all these zip boxes are installed on the fender, it's time to add some photo etch details. Sometimes I use a lighter to kneel the pieces that need to be bent.
I, I prefer to use Zeron shears to remove PE parts, but in this case I've got no choice. I'm using my X-Acto knife and the cutting mat. These are the very small details that need to be added to the zip boxes. They represent the latches on the zip boxes themselves. The parts are very small, maybe just a few millimeters. I found it best to place these very small details on this white cup that I turned upside down so I could easily see the parts and manipulate them. I use this large sewing needle to apply CA glue. At regular intervals I need to clean it so I use a lighter. This burns off the old CA glue and then it's simply a case of sanding off the residue. I use a thick gel type CA glue to attach these very fine details. I'm using a pencil crayon to manipulate these very small parts. Sometimes with the tweezers you have a very high chance of losing the parts. By using the wax crayon we can just simply pick the part up and drop it in a position. Once it's placed carefully, we just need to apply a small amount of CA glue to fix it into position. There's enough time to manipulate the part if it needs any last adjustments. By studying references, I knew that some of these latches would not be perfect. So I replicated this in the placement of these very small PE parts. They weren't sometimes precisely located. In some cases they were bent to depict damaged ones as per the reference photographs. Finally we can fix on these fenders. Make sure you dry fit first. I found the fit of the fender is very, very tight. Hold them firm while the cement sets. Continually check the alignment, especially looking at face on and from the rear to make sure that the fenders are true to the vehicle at 90 degrees to the hull. The PE grill covers add excellent detail here. The fit is perfect. The tow recovery wise is a sort of three stage process. The sort of first of all fixed by the eyelet links onto the body of the vehicle. Then it's carefully placed. We need to give these tow cables somewhat of a droop as they do on the real vehicle. They're heavy cables and they do sag under gravity and their own weight. These very small PE parts need to be added later on. They secure one of the towing cables to the hull of the vehicle. Okay, let's start working on the turret. We need to start off with this PE detail, which 
is a sort of cover inside the mantlet part. Make sure that all the burrs are removed. This is critical for this part. To bend the part, we just need to place it onto the mantlet. Use the fingers and bend it round to shape. The instructions call out no glue whatsoever required during construction of these parts. The PE part simply attaches via tabs to one side of the mantlet. The main mantlet part is then inserted centrally and then the other side is fitted. All you need to do is ensure that all the tabs align correctly. If you do this properly, the mantlet will elevate and depress. The assembly is then joined to the turret itself. There's quite a few armor pieces that need to be added to the turret. Continually dry fit them. And again, check and clean up all the burrs. The fit is pretty good. Apply the smallest amount of cement as, as possible. This makes for a very clean construction, which is really what we want to achieve on our builds. I thought these small inserts in the rear of the turret would be problematic. In fact, they weren't. They fitted perfectly. However, the piece of plate above it was a bit of a problem. Make sure you sand it down to make sure it fits. The interior of the turret is totally empty, so there's no point in having these doors open. They're simply glued it in place. And we do our old trick of using glue on the inside where it cannot be seen. This rear loading door was posed open creates a little bit of visual interest. I found some gaps on the bottom of the turret, but they really aren't too bad and they aren't very visible. solve that we simply apply liquid cement through that gap and use very light pressure in case you're wondering no clamps or anything like that was needed throughout the construction of this entire model here's a little trick on the optics I'm using a black sharpie type pen to colour in the back of these periscopes or viewports. As you can see, once they're placed in a position, we haven't got the grey plastic behind them. Details start to get affixed to this turret. And the bulk of the PE uh, parts are also fitted.
Once again, we have to remove the parts very carefully from the PE fret. Make sure all the burrs are removed using the sanding stick. These parts are highly visible. I first dry fitted them into position to check. I also wanted to check if the adjoining parts would also fit, which they do. This is what they represent. It's an anti-slip perforation. Apply a very small, sparing amount of super glue. We don't want to have big glue stains on these PE parts. Or we certainly don't want to obscure the detail that's been rendered. Simply place the PE parts on a position on the hull as per the instructions. Some of the anti-slip plates have got these small little legs on them that need to be bent down. They form the attachment point on the actual vehicle. I just simply use my tweezers, tweezers to bend them to a 90 degree angle, in some cases. I check carefully in the instructions to see the orientation of these small little tabs. They do differ from part to part. Once again, dry fit the parts first in location. Check that those little tabs align with the bolts. In some cases, we just simply held the PE part onto the model and bent it down using the model as a guide. Once all the PE parts are placed on the top of the turret, the detail rendered is excellent. It really complements the model and adds greater level detail. This little box structure, I did try and bend it with the tweezers and made a bit of a hash of it. That's the bend line that we need to follow. To correct this, I simply use the steel rule and press the part firmly against the cutting mat to make it true again. Then I used the edge of the ruler to provide a guide and then use my tweezers and fingers to bring the piece up into the 90 degree angle that's required. This is the final main bend on this little part. The end tabs are simply folded in using our fingers. Here's the auto loader. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later on, but I did have trouble on those parts. And here's my final tip. This is a snorkel. It was glued together and deliberately pressed very hard. There's a remnant of glue and plastic that's formed a seam. We're just using our X-Acto knife to scrape away that seam. After that, only a very light sanding is required. The final step is to apply a very thin layer of the extra thin cement. The result will be an invisible seam so and a flawless part. The build out. Near the final few pieces, we really don't have much left. Uh, a couple of pieces of photo etch. 
I'm going to show you how we build up the uh, the barrel as well um, from Master Club. And um, let's just talk about this so far. It's a thousand pieces plus kit, so it isn't um, you know a shake and the bake weekender. Um, I'm on my third week of building this. Not every single day. Um, but there is a lot of intricate small parts and details. I haven't showed you everything, but like all these grab handles, they've got the door retaining bolts, lots of photo etch, which I did show you earlier on. Um, the tracks as well. Let's talk briefly about these tracks then, okay? So the reason I'm showing you this here and now is that uh, I took some decisions on how I was going to paint this and that is one of the advantages of using the metal link tracks in that I can uh, paint them then place them on and then work so there's quite a few pieces that are detachable. I'm going to explain all that in, in the painting stages. So that's one advantage is that I can paint them separately and put them on. But I can probably also do that even with uh, with the supply tracks. If I bit, if I built the supply tracks in such a way that they just looped around the uh, back, the drive sprocket up to the uh, the either at the front, I could probably make a piece that was flexible enough that I could paint it off the vehicle. And um, these are the supply parts track parts are perfectly acceptable. I've used them many times, we've got enough detail. But I'm going along with these, I like to use them. And uh, you'll notice I haven't built up entire track lengths and there's a reason for that as well. One of the characteristics of these metal track parts is that they're quite heavy. And uh, I've had it before on some builds that they do exert a lot of drag onto the kit and it puts a bit of stress on the components, on these uh, plastic components, um, on the joints, etc. And mainly, the big one here is that I can get away with using the remaining tracks on another T80 by only using half, as long as I've got a vehicle that has big, long side skirts, and most of the T80s do. So uh, the plan is leave these off, can paint all this individually, explain, I'm gonna explain all that about the painting process. Uh, let's talk about some of the things that uh, weren't so fun. Uh, in particular, this here, this, um, the loading mechanism at the back. This is a pig, it really is. Uh, not a fun part to make. Um, struggled with it. It's not that good. I could have thought out my process a lot better before I started to build that. But as soon as I started making it, as I explained before, I knew I was going to have problems. I already knew that. But um, I think we can get away with that. At the moment, this is sort of dry fitted, as you can see. Uh, the idea there is that, again, with painting, I need to get into these areas here, and this uh, this big lump sort of gets in the way. Let's just put that out of the way for now. I'm going to have it in the uh, stowed position, like so. Um, I've left the, the uh, machine gun couple other with the HMG. The way that it shows you to build that up in the instructions, it just uh, it will, it will give you a lot of trouble. And I'm going to explain that. When I build the T72 from Drum T, I'm going to explain how you can build these up. But basically, instead of trying to do all these fiddly little parts, it's best off to get the mounting brackets installed straight away onto the coupler and then work from there so you've got everything in alignment. Uh, also, it tells you the instructions to immediately attach the HMG. Of course, you, know, you can just leave it loose. A lot easier to paint. I'm really impressed with the the, uh, the way that they 
they manage the photo etch on this, especially these parts here, which are these anti-slip plates that they have on top. Um, they look great. They really complement the build. I've got the uh, Vision Optics, that's detachable. And I've used the same trick there with the black Sharpie behind. And uh, that can be rotated into the uh, viewing position from the protected position. I've left off the track links, the spare track links at the front. I've left them off and I'm going to check references first. Really depends. I might put them on. I'm going to quickly check references and see if uh, if they're painted in another colour, uh, if there's some room for something artistic, as in some rusty cracks that I can put up here, I may well be painting them separately. However, if I find in most of my references that they just painted the overall green, which is more likely to be the case, let's just uh, glue them on right now. So I've still got a few more pieces to, uh, to finish on, on here. Uh, just a few bits of photo etch really nothing nothing really significant and I'm going to show you how we build up the master club barrel just explain something here and now okay I had this when I built the T80 I had the same situation the weight of this barrel is uh, I mean it's not a lot obviously but in terms of the model it's it is a fair amount of weight and stress on that joint there the single plastic joint so um, we have to be careful that we that we um, carefully bond it in there and then we haven't got any barrel droop that's going to look absolutely terrible and the problem i had with the t80 was when i mounted a aftermarket barrel it actually brought the turret off the top of the tank because the, um, the turret was just a sit on and um, that can be so that, that's the sort of one of the drawbacks of this barrel. Um, if we use the plastic one, it just simply fits right in there. We can also, you know, easily move it into the different positions. When when we fit this this big guy in here, I may well have to lock up this um, this mechanism, the elevation mechanism just to make sure that it's secure. And you can see that the the cradle, it actually just rests on the last portion, the plastic portion of the, the gun barrel. Um, so we haven't got the support on here and it got down, I tell you, it makes it one lengthy, lengthy vehicle. If you put it into that state there, that's how it would be, but there's no way I can get that supported. It's just too heavy. I should show that a bit better. I was going to say if we have it like so, it's just too heavy. And I'll just show you this that we actually can easily, relatively easily, detach the turret. Oh, there she goes. Sounds like it snapped, but it doesn't. So it's going to be pretty easy to paint. Um, another highlight, I really thought this was good, the way that they did these tow wires. Previously on uh, T80s and the T64 kits, you had to build all this up with photo etch, but that just that works so, so nicely. I'm, I'm glad about that. And recovery wire, as I explained, we've got that to droop down more realistically. So let's uh, finish off the build and, and wrap up on the build portion of the 2S19 Mustache.